have how, how about nails what about nails Nails Absolutely. Okay, so see, here's something I want to read to you guys. See if you guys have heard this before. For the want of a nail, have you heard this before? It's an I old. Have. It's an old 1700. I think it's credited to Benjamin Franklin, but it might be even older than him. Uh, and I was just reminded of this again the other day. Um, I'll read this to you. For the want of a nail, for the want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the want of a shoe, the horse was lost. Mm -hmm. For the want of a horse. The rider was lost. For the want of a rider, the battle was lost. For the want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. So there's probably a lot of different ways to apply that. Um, of course, mine is, of course, hindsight. That's the first word that comes to mind after that is hindsight. You know, because you can't see what ripple effects something, you know, not, not actually having a nail is going to, how that's going to impact you. Uh, so like you're saying, Scott, um, yeah, you can't eat gold, can't eat silver. Um, stuff, you know, stuff is important. Everything's inflating. And you know, that's another way to hedge, hedge the future. Buy your food now and you'll be, it's like an investment. You know, if, if we're really, if inflation is really 8% or 15% or whatever it is, maybe even 30% at this point, um, buying your food or whatever supplies you need now is going to save you 30% in the future if you can even get it. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, and the simple put, simple way to put it too is this: a lot of people get the, in the mindset, "I've got to go buy your supply of food today." Especially in Utah, you see, you hear that all the time. Go get your year supply of food, and you go to the online stores and you can buy a year supply of freeze dried foods. Again, great if you can afford it, great, but it's not practical now or in the future to re rely on that solution, right? You can buy it, and you you've preserved a period of time in your life in the future you're protected. But what, what makes the most sense is go buy exactly what's in your pantry and work on doubling that and mm -hmm. then triple that and quadruple that. And because the reason it, for that is, is you should be rotating the food you're, you're using all the time. And if you do that, like I've got, I've got food I'm eating right now that I bought two, three years ago. And I've got like the, these cans of food, for example, a can of chili that I'm eating right now cost me 28 cents i go buy a can of chili today at the store because we just went and bought some yesterday it was a dollar 80 what 15 ounces mm -hmm. 3.5 servings now that's nothing like if i went out to eat that's stupid money at that point mm -hmm. right and i still do it because i like my burgers and i like someone else to make them i'm just weird but like mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to go out and do all that stuff but it's like a burger and fries today versus a burger and fries a year ago, it's gone up over 40%. Yeah. In a year, they say inflation's what, seven or 8% right now uh, yeah. across the board. Officially, Look at the cost of a used vehicle. Mm -hmm. I think it's They've gone, gone up, up uh, almost 30% this, this year alone. It's gone up almost 100% in the last three years. Yeah. I went to Taco Bell the other day with my little girl. We bought a quesadilla. She loves quesadillas. And the quesadilla, I used to pay like two, three bucks. It was like four or five bucks. I'm like that, that's double. That's not 7%. I was just like, whoa. And then some of the, some of these places in town, they're like, after a certain time of the day, you go in there, they don't even have stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, so the the getting the right things makes total sense. Like nails. I've got my, I've got family that used to be homesteaders um, that started in Virginia and worked their way west now they're in idaho and utah and they would burn down their homestead to take the nails with them when they go to build a new homestead wow that's legit. and that's the norm that's how mm -hmm. it used to be they would burn down the home and then collect all the nails now remember these are one room homes they're not that big yeah that's how valuable a nail would be and it resources like that are hard to just make waste not want so, not Waste not, mm -hmm. want not. Use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. And so I love that. all the things that we're telling you like to pay attention to, the solution to those is to make the practical application of what you're doing, what you're spending your money on, make more sense, not just for today, but for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like, are you buying your kids toys that are going to break in a day or two? Or are you buying them toys that are going to last for the next generation? Mm -hmm. They don't really make toys much that, that will last, right? And, but so, but if you can find the ones that do, 
get those. You know, mm-hmm. are you are you buying things that have diminishing value or diminishing return? You know, investors will always tell you what buy something that's going to appreciate, provide a dividend, or pay it. You know, give you interest. Buy something that's going to, you know, produce more. Like the the wealthy trick is you buy assets that pay for your things, and then you like you get an asset to then pay for your new car. Mm-hmm. You don't just go buy a new car. And so we need to think about just our daily purchases that way. And it's going to do two things for you. It's going to give you peace, but it's also going to give you things that have way better value than what you've been buying the last few years or the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years of your life. Mm -hmm. It's going to change your mindset into a wealth mindset, which is going to give you a foot up in preparedness because you're focusing on instead of buying this shiny new thing or that shiny new thing, you're going to look at it and go, do I really need that? Yeah. I think right now, um, that applies to a lot of things. Obviously, like you mentioned, used cars. Uh, you, right now, buy a used car, it's just going to go up in value. Uh, if you can imagine if China does take over Taiwan, what's going to happen to our semiconductors? You know, Used cars and are going to continue to go up in value. So I know that's happened with all of my vehicles in the last couple of years. They become assets. They are liabilities in truth, right? But they become assets where I could turn around and sell them for more. Uh, and same, you know, because of inflation, same with the food, same with ammunition. You know, I, I purchased a, a good chunk of my amb- ammunition or say most of it several years ago when it was still cheap. And now I've, mm-hmm. I consider that an asset, right? So, so things, stuff. Um, and, and does it make you not want to shoot sometimes? It does. Absolutely. You're like, yeah. if I replace that bullet, it's now $3, but I only spent 15 cents on this. Like, exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's at least hundred percent since uh, more since when I purchased most of my ammo, but um, that's the mindset I've taken uh, on, on everything is, is, you know, to buy things now, if you can afford it, right. You don't want to go into debt to go buy things, but if you've got dollars sitting in the bank that are depreciating, you know, again, this is kind of a solution, uh, you know, in my mind is if you got dollars in the bank that are sitting there making a tenth of a percent you know, per year, every, every time I look at my checking statement, interest receive one cent. What good does What's it have any cash do? in the bank whatsoever? So, you know, for me, I put it gold, silver, put it in things, right? I know my family's going to need uh, this in the future. I'll go buy it now and stick it, to, stick it in the garage or stick it in the basement. And uh, that's, that's what I've been doing. And that's what I recommend is, is uh, look forward to what you might need. And if you can get it now, don't wait, because it's going to cost more, first of all. Um, and uh, and then yeah. it'd be harder to get. Don't kick, don't shoot yourself or don't kick yourself for not buying it five years ago. Buy it now, because in five years, you'll wish you'd bought it five years ago, exactly. which, which is the now. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing, when you're looking to buy something, make sure it's a quality thing. I'd rather mm-hmm. buy something that's going to be a little bit more expensive now. For example, let's say you want to buy a, a, a nice EDC knife or something, an everyday carry knife. You know, it's better to spend a little extra money to get that quality knife that's going to be there and be sharp and be strong than to buy the knife that's cheap. And then, you know, before you know it, it breaks and, th- you know, two, three months, six months, a year later, it breaks and you're like, now what do I do? Like, now you got to go buy another one, which is probably buying two knives is more expensive than the one knife you would have bought had you just bought mm-hmm. the quality knife. Absolutely. And so buying quality, item, whether that's clothes, shoes, cars, buy quality and that value that will last. It, and then you, when you, when you do make it do, do without, whatever it up and wear it out, mm-hmm. it, it will take way longer for you to wear it out. Case that's, in point. That's, absolutely. Yes. Buying something that's used oftentimes is better quality and better lasting than a lot of the new stuff. Like I, I like certain types of knives. Like I, I carry this knife all the time with me. That's my daily EDC. However, in my bag, I carry this knife. Who knows what knife this is? Mark. How old is this knife? Several years. Probably, this one is probably 20 years for those of you this that are one listening. is older than me probably mm-hmm. like well maybe not quite but this this army navy surplus there are certain things that last longer i've got shell i've got shelves of things in my garage that are tools that are older than me older than my dad they were my grandfather's things and i've got stuff that i wish i could have gotten um from my my mother or my, my, my wife's gr- uh, grandparents, 
when they passed away, they left it with her aunt. When her aunt passed away, she gave it to her brother and he didn't know what to do with it. And so he went and sold it all. Oh, and I'm over here like ripping hair out. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll buy him. And he sold us some, uh, some Jack wagon online. And I'm like, I, I need those. They're hand tools, chisels. They're, there's, there's hand saws. They're like, they're oh, there's hand drills. Like there were so many good, like really good tools. And my dad has some of those. And I'm like, dad, if I ever need them, when the grid goes down, like I'm coming to your house and borrowing tools. Like he's got tools that are like 80, 100, 150 years old that last. And, and he was a contractor. So he's got power tools also that they're corded, but they use less power and they're stronger than the stuff you buy now. Like he's got a Hitachi saw that is super old. He's got a whole whole bunch of different products that are Milwaukee and, and th those things don't break and he maintains them. So take care of the things you have, you know, maintain the things you have. And if you can't afford the new one, that's probably better. You know, go look at, go look at what else is out there on the market. Look at the Facebook marketplaces, look at, you know, here in Utah, KSL.com. Like you there's look at the classifieds online, find something in your local community and get the used stuff. Like in the group on our Facebook page and also on TikTok, people are talking about, oh man, I go get all that stuff all summer long. You can get it for like five cents, 20 cents, 50 cents. It's all at garage sales. All the stuff you need as far as tools, as far as books, like you can find them at garage sales because people are clearing that stuff out all the time. Whenever there's an estate sale and they do a garage sale, oh my gosh, that is like the cornucopia of prepping stuff. You're mm -hmm. gonna find a ton of good stuff and it might be stuff that, that's an asset class that you can turn around and sell for more money than you picked it for. So yeah, then you yep. can take that money and go buy food storage and go buy water totes and go buy other stuff. Yeah, I found a little gem and you know, my parents passed away this last year and I found a little gem in, in my dad's tools. Um, it, uh, it was an axe, axe head. It was stamped uh, Sweden on the axe head. Swedish steel. You know, that's some wow. of the best steel for, for axes. And wow. I took the axe head, I put a new handle on it and it's, you know, it's, 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 I would say it's probably 50, 60 years old. It's like, it's brand new. I mean, it's sharp as it sharpened it up. And so you're absolutely right, Scott is these old tools and you kind of have to know what you're looking for. Right. Cause mm -hmm. there could be some Harbor freight tools out there. Right. Even, this, like, even though the side of the billing says quality tools, best price, like, <laughs> okay. If you're comparing quality to price, okay. Maybe that make you can, you could use that word quality. Right. But don't tell me their quality at harbor freight because <laughs> they're not the quality that, that scott's talking about right yeah so um you do have to have a little bit of practice to know what tools look or what kind of steel to look for what kind of knife to look for that takes some knowledge and feel free to ask us because you know like as you can tell i'm happy to to yeah regurgitate my my knowledge the information on tools and, and knives and so we say hey what knife should i get what steel should i get you know because you can go overboard and you can go too cheap too so there's there is a happy medium on a lot of things Thank <laughs> you.